Sabr, the, the word sabr means several things. And in English, it's kind of unfair to translate it as patience. So first, let's comment on what the several meanings of sabr are. It's, it certainly includes patience, but it includes perseverance. Perseverance implies when things become difficult, you still hang on, you still keep going, chugging along. This is persevering. It also implies commitment. In other words, you never get lazy, you never slack off. You remain committed, like you're committed to getting to work on time every day. Or you're committed to handing the assignment in before it's due. Commitment. It also implies constancy. In other words, your commitment doesn't fluctuate, it doesn't go up and down. It's the same. You know, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, in defining sabr, he said, it is to have the same level of obedience to Allah in ease or in difficulty. If you can have the same level of obedience to Allah, whether times are easy or they are difficult, then you have exercised the quality of a sabr. That's what sabr is. So now, but Allah doesn't say, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَصَبَرُوا This is very important. They encouraged each other and counseled each other to the best of their ability, with sincerity, truthfully, to the truth and to the obligations that they owe. And Allah didn't continue by saying, and they were patient in doing so. He didn't just say they were patient. He went a step further and said, وَتَوَاصَوْ sabr," Which teaches us something huge. Not only is sabr included now, meaning they were patient, they were perseverant, they remained constant, but they encouraged each other in remaining patient and constant and persevering. You know what that teaches us? You cannot keep your sabr. You need someone to counsel you and give you strength and say, listen, you need to have sabr. We need, we need to feed, sabr feeds off of each other. You know, the strength comes from the other. Sabr, you know, uh, the way it's described in the most simple terms is ala al-masaib, meaning you have to be patient, persevere, remain constant, no matter how difficult things get. Wasbir ala ma asabak. Persevere no matter what calamity falls upon you. That's one meaning. Guess who shaitan's after? The people who are trying to serve this deen. So that he will tempt them with disobedience to Allah in their private moments more than anyone else. They are more susceptible. They are more under attack. So you have to have sabr from falling into disobedience to Allah. And then you have to have sabr on the obedience to Allah. Meaning obedience to Allah can become difficult. And you have to remain perseverant. And you have to, you know, there are among us, these are real stories. This is not some theory. Allah speaks to us, He talks about us, and He knows what kind of lives we lead. Fihi dhikrukum. And it is your own mention, you know. Uh, the, the first comment is all of these are mentioned in the past tense. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Past tense. وَعَمِلُوا Past tense. وَتَوَاصَ وَتَوَاصَ All past tense. What's the benefit of that? What's the difference between saying that and saying, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ وَيَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ وَيَتَوَاصَوْنَ بِالْحَقِّ وَيَتَوَاصَوْنَ بِالصَّبْرِ Why not mention it in the present tense? Mentioning it in the past tense implies these are people who lived their entire life doing it and until the moment they died. So you can look back at their entire life and you can, you'll, you'll be able to say, yes, they fulfilled the rights of iman. Yes, when you look at their life, you say, they, these people did good. And they did tawasib al-haq and they did tawasib al-sabr. In other words, you know, this is almost a fulfillment of the ayah, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُ Don't you dare die except that you're Muslims. When you're looking back at their life, you don't say they used to be good and then they failed, tapered off. Until the end of their life, they were committed, so you can look back at them and say, they fulfilled all four of these things. So by mentioning them in the past, it is an illustration that their entire life represents these behaviors, until death came to them. These are the people. In other words, you can never just stop. You can never just look, you, you have to reach the point where you can look back, or, or people will look back at your entire life and be able to say, all these four conditions were met. This is the, the second benefit. A lot of people don't associate iman with anything other than just a statement. They just say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm done. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Maybe a little bit of, or we just go to the masjid sometimes pray some, not even regular prayer, maybe Jama'ah, right? Uh, but they, they, the, the idea, why do Muslims behave in this way, the vast majority of them, obviously you could claim it, it as a lack of knowledge, but really what it is, is an attitude. And the attitude is, I'm already saved because I have Iman. Iman is the only condition. Now there are two problems with that attitude. The first problem is the assumption that we have Iman. The second problem is the assumption that Iman alone is Enough. So the, the two problems with that. So let's address the first problem. To assume that we have iman, we first have to understand what does it mean to have iman. 
And what it means to, you know, what Iman means is two things. You can think of it from a legal point of view, and you can think of it from a real, you know, a reality point of view. From a legal point of view, anyone who says La ilaha illallah, anyone who says Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has what? They have Iman. When Allah says Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, those of you who believe, who's He talking to? Anyone who says the shahada. Everyone who he, who says the shahada is included in that address. When you look at someone and they say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, if they say salam to you, what's your automatic assumption about them? They have iman. They've met that baseline condition. So this is this, however, is from a worldly legal point of view. Legally speaking, anyone who claims to be Muslim is Muslim, and they have you know for us then in that sense, Islam is no different than iman. They're essentially the same thing. Faith and Islam are the same. But then there's the matter of that distinction that Allah Himself makes in Surah Al-Hujurat. Where he says, قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ أَمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا The Bedouins say, we have Iman. Tell them, no, you, uh, you only have Islam. You've only accepted Islam. And Iman, وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانِ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Iman hasn't entered your hearts yet. In other words, in this statement we learned, that what people assume to be Iman happens to be what? According to Allah. Islam. That's just Islam. And where does Iman rest? Iman doesn't rest on the tongue. According to this ayah, where does Iman rest? In the heart. So now it's a, it's a change of thought. You know, The one who assumes that they have Iman, based on what they said with their tongue, is already being given a change of attitude. They're being told, no, 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 Iman is something else, it's in the heart. Now there, there are many things that are talked about in the Qur'an in regards to the heart, but at least three things that I'd like to share with you in regards to this discussion that I think are paramount. In other words, when you have ayat in your heart, what does that increase? Your iman. When you remember Allah, what's the best way to remember Allah? The ayat of Allah. And when you remember the, Him through the ayat, then iman increases. And how do I know these three things are connected? Let's turn to Surah Al-Anfal for a moment. This is the eighth surah of the Quran. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ The true believers are those when Allah is mentioned or remembered, their hearts tremble. When Allah is mentioned or remembered, their hearts tremble. So what is now mentioned next to the heart? Remembrance. Look at Allah, wajilat kulubum. We're in the same ayah now, I'll go on. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ When his ayat are recited onto them. Now what's, what else is in this ayah? The ayat. There's remembrance and there's ayat. What's the only thing left? There were three things, right? There's the remembrance, there's the ayat. What was the third thing? Iman. زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ these, these ayat increase them in terms of iman and they continue to place their trust in their master exclusively. Right? So the three things are put together by Allah Azza wa Jal. Now when, so, so in other words, the first change of attitude, how do I know if I even have iman? Do I have these three things? And how do I know if I'm really counted among those who believe when Allah is mentioned, what happens to my heart? When the ayat are mentioned, does my iman increase? Do I feel something? And especially the easiest gauge of that is the salah. Because Allah says to Musa alayhi salam, aqim salata li dhikri. Establish salah to remember me. The easiest gauge of iman is salah. And you know how connected salah and iman are. This will come up again later on today. But you know how connected salah and iman are? Allah azza wa jalla says in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in terms of not wasting the deeds of the believers, Allah azza wa jalla mentions in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ Allah would not be one to waste your iman. You know when the qibla was changed? When the qibla was changed, certain Bani Israel said, you've been praying in, this, in the wrong direction. None of that counted. None of that counted. And Allah responded, Allah would never be one to waste your prayer. But instead of using the word prayer, salah, what did He use? Iman in the meaning of prayer. He used it interchangeably. In other words, a sign of iman is what? Salah. And Salat combines those three things. It's a sign of Iman, it, is, it comprises the ayat of Allah, and it is the ultimate form of dhikr. Aqimis salata li dhikri. SubhanAllah. How incredibly these things are interconnected with each other.